this problem. So basically in this problem, if you guys, if you just followed the steps that I went over, all I simply want you to do is the first thing is your group your first, your quadratic and your linear term. Second step, you have to factor out so a is equal to 1. If you guys remember, we have ax squared plus bx plus c. a has to be 1. So in this case, I can factor out a 2. When factoring out a 2, I have x squared plus 3x plus 7. This is usually where students get confused. They want to give up once they know there's a fraction, and they want to go ahead and use decimals. Please avoid using decimals, especially in this case where you'd have um, three halves. Actually, that would still, um, yeah, three halves, 1.5. Um, anyways, just keep it as fractions. So anyways, to be able to find the value that completes the square, you're just going to take b divided by 2 and square it. Now please make sure you use this b, not the b from the original equation. So in this case, I'm going to have 3 divided by 2 squared. Since 2 does not divide into 3 evenly, I'm going to leave it as is. So I'll leave that as 9 over 4. Then, as we talked about, you add that inside the parentheses and you subtract it outside the parentheses. So I have 2 times x squared plus 3x plus 9 over 4 plus 7 minus 9 over 4. And then the other part that got pretty confusing, I'm not really adding 9 fourths inside this parenthesis. I'm adding a 9 fourths that's being multiplied by 2. Do you guys agree with me? So in reality, if I'm adding and subtracting, if I add 9 fourths being multiplied by 2, I have to subtract a 9 fourths that's being multiplied by 2. In reality, you can rewrite that as a fraction. So therefore, that can be reduced to 9 halves, because divi 2 divided by 4 can reduce to 1 over 2. Then, the, if you guys remember the factoring form, a lot of students will get tripped up trying to factor this. But all I told you guys to write in is just x plus or minus b divided by 2. That's it. So b divided by 2 is what? 3 halves. So I have 2 times x plus 3 over 2 squared. And then I got to add 7 minus 9 halves. So to subtract 7 minus 9 halves, you convert to 7 to 1 over 1, or 7 over 1. Multiply to get common denominators. So you'd have 14 over 2 minus 9 over 2, which is equal to 5 over 2. Um, So therefore, we can identify, what else are they asking on this? Use complete square to describe the graph of each function. Support your answer graphically. So we would just use a graphic calculator to make sure. But my vertex, uh, vertex is going to be at negative 3 halves, comma 5 halves. My axis of symmetry is going to be x equals negative 3 halves. And I would also have a horizontal compression of 2. And that's basically what I do describe. Yes? Vertical stretch and horizontal compression are going to be the same thing. So either or would work. Anybody have any questions on this? No? Yes? Yep. The 3x to the what? What I'm saying is, x plus 3 halves squared is the same thing as x squared plus 3x plus 9 over 4. This is factored form. This is expanded form. Now, just real quick, let's, let's just go through it. So I want you to, so when you have it in expanded form, you have to, fact, you have to put it in factored form. Well, how do you always put it in factor form? Well, you can factor it, but when you have fractions, I'm not stupid. I know that's difficult to factor thinking of fractions. So just remember, the factored form is always x plus b divided by 2 squared. If that was negative, then it would be x minus. Okay? And just to check, just to prove to you that it's the same, let's do x plus 3 half times x plus 3 half. That's x plus 3 half squared, right? 
x times x is x squared. x times 3 halves is 3 half x. x times 3 half is plus 3 halves x. 3 halves times 3 halves equals 9 fourths. 3 halves plus 3 halves is going to be 6 halves. Six divided by two is. So do you see how I'm just using a different form? Does that make sense? But if you don't use the factored form, then there's no point in completing the square. That's 